Okay. So, hey, everybody, it's Brett. Welcome to this week's class of Crypto Mastery. And uh, we're going to cover some news. We're going to cover some uh, charts, what's going on in the world. Look at that Solana pulling back just as we predicted. And uh, of course, uh, in the M3 class here, which is our more advanced class tomorrow. So, um, a couple of you privately, I was saying Solana is going to pull back here. And sure enough, look, it did. So, um, we'll dive into that. And of course, this class is uh, to talk about our uh, indicators, these Crypto Mastery indicators here at cryptomastery.org. So let's unpack the news, you guys. Uh, what's going on here today? Uh, there is uh, some talk about the halving, um, and that I'll pull up in a bit. We have Bitcoin kind of holding at 36K. You, you know, with CPI this week, I think we should, we could have some pullback and maybe sell the news. The um, uh, Although I think we, you know, there's, there's still a scenario of a lockup period where it's a lockup move, which kind of blows everyone out. The shorts are sort of waiting for a pullback. Everyone's waiting for a pullback, which we may not get. Uh, Bitcoin ETF approval by the SEC is approaching, but uh, we don't know for sure if that will be approved. And so if they do not approve the BlackRock ETF this time, uh, markets should expect to pull back. So the uh, we'll look at that as well. And uh, so, yeah, so the Bitcoin miners just so you know, they typically sell $12 billion of Bitcoin a year to cover their mining fees, the rigs, all of the energy, et cetera. And so one of the reasons, as Michael Saylor was pointing out, that the uh, halving could be a good thing is uh, and will be a good thing. One of the many reasons uh, we'll unpack the other reasons that should drive Bitcoin prices higher. But if there's less available Bitcoin to mine, the havers, ha sorry, the miners will have half to sell. So if you imagine the twelve billion dollars that they're currently selling per year drops to six billion per year, then that's less of a you know, less of a sell pressure on that and um, more of a buy pressure. So that should really help with prices. And also we're seeing a withdrawing, a less amount of Bitcoin on the exchanges. So basically the uh, sell side pressure is diminishing on uh, the uh, sell side and the buy pressure is going up because there are less available coins on the exchanges. More people are hodling. And of course we had the largest number of new Bitcoin accounts ever Last Sunday, I believe it was, uh, not just yesterday, but last Sunday, 700,000 new Bitcoin wallets and accounts opened up. So that's that's uh, and that's and worth noting. So uh, let's take a look at some of these other news stories here. Let's just dive in. Uh, Coindesk says that uh, CPI could provide next Bitcoin catalyst. And we'll see. So let's turn on our, I know you guys uh, don't necessarily can read this easily, but uh, so basically... That five week run took out. So we went 40% higher in Bitcoin, it stalled out around the 37,000 level. You know, I did say once we closed above 32K, it would be a quick run higher and uh, maybe up to 40. I do think we go to 48K, 50K. I, that's still my read on this. So, but see, economists expect the monthly headline CPA in October to have slowed to 1%. Let's make sure this is a recent article. Yep. So basically since October, basically they're saying if CPI has fallen, which is anticipated to have fallen to 3.3% from 3.7, then the core CPI, which strips out food and energy costs is expected to have remained flat. Um, you know, if it's, if it falls, um, we'll just have to see how the market reacts. And let's see, when is that going to happen? I've got my uh, trade calendars here. And um, we can just pull up Forex Factory and see. So what we have here, uh, so CPI is coming up this week. What is it? Thursday, uh, so Tuesday. So that would be today. CPI uh, month over month, year over year. So that data actually is out already. So the anticipated was 3. Point, the previous was 3.7. And the anticipated was 3.3. So the actual was 3.2. Okay, so that's interesting. And then, of course, usually we have uh, the PPI coming up on Wednesday. So we want to watch the PPI as well, which um, is expected to drop a bit. So let's just jump over to Bitcoin real quick and see what's happening, how the markets are digesting this. You know, Bitcoin pulling off that 38K level, no surprise there. And uh, we'll have to see what happens. But a pullback would be warranted here. I think we were a bit early. We had this big pump up in this area. So I'd be looking for something more like this now. And again, we we have looked at why 48K, 50K more likely to hit that golden pocket retracement. So just uh, checking the um, 
Um, okay, good. So basically, the bottom line is a bit of a pullback here. We'd like to see that. Here's a bit a buy the dip opportunity, everyone. And so just uh, keep that in mind. And let's just do this uh, real quick here. There we go. Uh, perfect. Okay. So with that in, the, in mind, let's keep going. Uh, there's a couple news articles to unpack here. And additionally, I don't see that we need to go too far down the rabbit hole here with this you know we could pull up trueflation and talk about interest rates but i just it doesn't really matter because then we're just left pontificating on what might happen and i've been saying for years show me the chart i'll tell you the news how's the market reacting that's the most important thing so let's see bitcoin miners make money ahead of the having so as i was saying you know the bitcoin no now, the Bitcoin miners likely are are selling here and uh, locking in some profits going into the halving when, uh, let's see, I turn off my ad, turn my ad blocker on, but they don't let me on routers. So some of these new sites, uh, darn it, they don't let us turn on those ad blockers. Bitcoin miners are uh, making a lot of money here as uh, as we can see here, say making hay. And, um, you know, uh, why why wouldn't they? But uh, expect to see some sell pressure going into the uh, the having because that's why how they make money and some of these miners they're going to go away they're not going to be able to keep their business afloat that'll be good for us and push prices higher so let's see the business has been yanked out of the doldrums by the cryptocurrency recent rally so if if you could mine a bitcoin for say thirty thousand dollar cost and sell it for forty thousand there you go uh heavy sell pressure take profits at these levels and so but somewhere keep in mind somewhere the sell pressure is getting absorbed whether that's blackrock sort of buying through their other channels or people trying to get ahead of the wave of buying that may come with the etf being approved so mining companies here racing to lock in profits before the Bitcoin having, as we see here, when rewards for producing the tokens are cut in half. So you guys said that once the having happens, less Bitcoin will be mineable and therefore there will be uh, more competition and, um, you know, therefore price should go higher, supply shock. Okay, so and, and less sell pressure because there's less of the miners to sell. Of course, the halving is coming in April 2024, right around the corner, and uh, the process is designed to slow the release of Bitcoin. And if you're new here and aren't aware or been hiding under a rock for the last 10 years, there's only 21 million Bitcoin that will be available. And uh, so that's why it's a scarce asset. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing for price. And a reason why Larry Fink is saying that people will flow into crypto and uh, meaning Bitcoin, He's, he wasn't really allowed to say Bitcoin specifically, So, but they have also applied for a, an Ethereum ETF. But um, the point is, he said there will be a flight to quality. And so that means that it's a true scarce asset, whereas um, other ones are are not. Fiat money being a not a scarce asset. And of course, gold, yeah, there's no limit in gold. We're getting better and better at mining gold. You can't walk in and pay with a golden uh, nickel or a golden uh, coin, rather. I'm not sure they make a golden nickel, but uh, you can't just go into a store and buy, pay with you buy your gas with gold, right? So that's why it makes a perfect uh, new way to have money. And of course, we uh, you guys are no stranger to why this is uh, going higher. So at any rate, we won't get into the hash rate. Uh, I think we've covered that enough. Let's keep going. I do want to get into the charts and keep this moving. So crypto fund inflows break $1 billion for 2023. So that's great news. We see you know, money flowing back in. This is from private investors, institutional investors, hedge funds, and, um, you know, um, who knows, you know, there are likely companies that are being less public about buying Bitcoin, Michael Saylor being the most vocal. And again, talking about raising 750 million in common stock here this year to buy more Bitcoin. He recently went on record saying basically that uh, MicroStrategy's business plan is to A, make money and have a very profitable business, is to make money to pay down the debt they've taken on to buy Bitcoin and then with anything left over to buy more Bitcoin. So uh, that is, uh, is going to be a driver. And other people are likely following that because as more businesses jump on board to add Bitcoin and crypto to their balance sheets, and uh, you know even the uh, other accounting methods that MicroStrategy is using. So um, there'll be a race to get ahead of the train, okay? And uh, Elon Musk, Apple, uh, Tesla, who knows? Uh, they could easily come in and drop the billion dollars into this market. So, and experts were currently around 1.3 trillion in the big, or the total crypto market cap. And experts are saying the Bitcoin low could uh, could break 10 trillion at some point, maybe by 2030, we'll have to see. Even half of that, let's take the half. Where would that take things? Even if Bitcoin alone, let's just say the total market cap gets to five trillion, that's about three times where we are now. Still beats a sharp stick in the eye, but of course it could go much higher. 
crypto inflows. So a billion dollars. Let's see where they say this is coming from. And uh, let's turn to my handy little pen here. So uh, adding 293 million last week. So that's good. Bitcoin and Ether based products led the surge. Oh, that makes sense. Perfect sense because Ether, the second um, most stable coin. And of course, BlackRock, again, coming out recently with news, they want to have a, an ETH ETF. So the Bitcoin ETPs, I'm not sure what the ETPs are, a million inflows in Ether funds experiencing the um their largest inflow since august 2022 so the hand rings on the wall everyone people are trying to get ahead of the having and the uh you know trying to get ahead of everybody else for the next surge so let's see crypto fund influence uh, sorry inflows coin shares 21 shares bitwise grayscale and pro shares broke a billion for the year so just these alone that doesn't include fidelity doesn't include arc invest doesn't include you know blackrock yet so guys, this is happening. That's what we've been waiting for. So again, we want to get to the charts here as soon as we can. And uh, I think we made the point here. We don't need to go too much farther, but look at this uptrend in inflows here. I imagine this is uh, this is a weekly chart. So really seeing that thing, look at the trend there, higher lows, higher highs. That's good news and indicates that things are going to go higher as, as we would assume. BlackRock's Ether filings and Solana's 40% move. Solana, again, has pushed up here. That was the chart I had on here originally and uh, right up to this level here, resistance. You know, Look, uh, we'll talk about these levels and the other overlap here was our um, modified Bollinger Band right up in this area. So no, um, no surprise it's pulled back, but Solana certainly could run at any time. We'll come back to this momentarily. And um, by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like, subscribe to the channel. That way you can get these updates. We do these classes live every Tuesday and uh, typically at 1 p.m. or noon Eastern or 1 p.m. Eastern. And um, yeah, so we're going to be uh, doing more of these here as we uh, get into this bull rally. So let's talk about BlackRock here. Uh, you know, again, we don't know. Let's talk about both sides. You know, they say it's priced in. Uh, I don't think it's priced in because it's an uncertainty. And I don't like hearing that the consensus is that it's going to happen. Because as we know, in crypto, whenever there's consensus, the, the public and the masses are usually wrong. And they're, the move that can cause the... If we have everybody leveraging long right now, trying to get ahead of things, then what would make most sense for the big money whales and players? Maybe it's even BlackRock that uses their influence to say to the SEC, hey, maybe uh, maybe you shouldn't improve this just yet. Uh, we're not ready yet. And then the markets will tank. And then, of course, BlackRock will come in and buy everything at a, a discount. So certainly they have the influence. We have to be aware of that. My personal opinion is we go to 48K, 50K area, and then there's news, a news-driven pullback, you know, aka the news, and uh, we pull back from there. But we'll have to see what happens. So I, actually, I recommend some caution here, being ready to take profits up into that range. But I do feel that um, we, uh, we should push higher from here, and then we'll just have to see. All right, so... Let's see, uh, Butterfill, not sure who this person is. The Solana-based funds witnessing significant influences, 12 million a week where the crypto asset rose 40%. You know, Solana definitely one to watch and some are estimating it'll be worth 20% of Ethereum uh, as it bull grows. So a $20,000 Ethereum, certainly in the cards, if we said 20% of that, that would put Solana at 4,000. So let's say Solana gets a 15K. That was a target we had back in the 2021 bull run. So at a 15K Ethereum, that would put Solana at uh, 3K Solana based on that 20% valuation. So I would be weighted in the top three. Solana to me is the third. Um, you know, Cardano is just such a slow mover. I'm not a big fan of it. It's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana. Those are my top three. And I would be looking to buy anything on a pullback. And the number four, I would say, is Chainlink. So we'll look at that as far as the tier ones go. So let's talk about this here. Uh, Solana had did push up around that $60 range and pull back. And yeah, we did, we did talk about the countries that are buying up crypto. Uh, I'm going to pull up the chart that gives us, and if you haven't already seen it on my trading view page, let's see if I have that chart. It's the uh, scenarios for a hundred thousand, a hundred fifty five thousand, and a two hundred thousand Bitcoin. So we'll have to pull that up. It's uh, it's logged in one of my other charts. But um, well, here's one of them uh, showing these uh, different levels, also a macro bull flag. So the 1.618 Fibonacci puts us at 100K, just over 100 is likely. Probably we could get up here to 
uh, let's see, to this um, 2.618, that's around 150,000. And the possible up here to 212,000 for Bitcoin in this cycle. And uh, we have, I have six reasons and scenarios where that could uh, happen. And I do think that's, I think that we can get there. By the way, if you haven't already, if you haven't seen this already, one of the reasons is, you know, this exact top on the market cycle of 2021. Well, look at this. If you go to the last cycle in 2018, down to market cycle bottom and extend that out, it hands, it went exactly to the 3.618 Fib extension right up there to that 65,000. I know we peaked a little bit later, but many are saying this was the high. And this was, if you're familiar with those Wyckoff patterns, this was the upthrust after distribution. This is the distribution. Many said this was the actual high. This was a fake out. And as you can see, I'm drawing this based on this bull flag, based on the high, the candle close high on the monthly time frame. So this little spike here, you know, uh, what's a few thousand dollars among friends? Point being is that's another reason why I think that uh, this is certainly on the table with these six scenarios to go up to 212,000, even 220,000, 212,000 is the number. So, I mean, obviously guys, if we get it to 200,000 on Bitcoin, you want to start looking to take some profits, uh, not financial advice, but uh, it would seem to be a, um, a good uh, indicator barometer, but we'll of course be watching our indicators that uh, have called these markets I like our early reversal indicator here, uh, which is great on the monthly time frame and the weekly. Just check in the uh, chat. I don't see any questions. So uh, let's finish off with the news here. But this is exciting. One of the reasons on my six catalysts for getting up to 100K Bitcoin and higher are nation states starting to accumulate Bitcoin. So here we have it in the news saying that regionally Canada, US, Germany, Switzerland led the flows and contributing 105 million, 81 million, 52 million. Now, the reason that China and Russia aren't mentioned here or North Korea, they don't share that data. So you have to assume there's equally as much coming in from these other countries that don't want to be late to the party. Uh, so let's see, additionally, blockchain equity ETFs saw their largest inflows since July of 2022, amounting to 14 million. So it all adds up, doesn't it? A little bit here, a little bit there. Uh, 10 million here, 20 million there definitely adds up. So uh, let's see here. BlackRock says USDT. Here's some uh, counter news. So this is what we want to be aware of. Any potential negative news to spook the market. And, you know, these would be short-term pullbacks, I believe. But uh, we'll have to see. BlackRock says USDT and USDC stablecoins pose risks to Bitcoin. Y you know, why are they saying that? Because, hmm, let's see, they probably want to uh, get in on the action with their own stablecoin. Um, not clear yet. Uh, more people coming after Tether, but uh, Tether has had every cycle. There's more FUD about Tether. And it's always dismissed. And so I'm a little surprised to see them attacking this and the USDC uh, Tether stable coin. So I don't know that they're laying the groundwork let's just say for their own uh, stable coin would not be surprised or let's just see what the article says here though. Uh, largest asset manager asks, was, let's see, in the world shocked many when it announced its intention to file. Okay, that's not really the news. Let's get to the meat of this. And okay, the document. Okay, so the shock was they announced an ETF, but they also discussed risks of the um, USDT and USDC risk to Bitcoin. So let's take a look at that. Let's see, here's a better color for you to read that there. And um uh, this is kind of some new news. I haven't dug into this before. Let's see. Uh, the mar So subsequently, markets anxiously awaiting potential approval. Um, you know, largely this has been priced in. And um, I'm just a little leery of things that are taken for granted. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to see what happens. Could there be a hiccup? There's likely going to be a hiccup there. All right. So, you know, I would keep some powder dry for any pullback. And, um, you know, certainly again, around that 48K50 region, I think that would be a likely area for pullbacks, a, a deeper pullback in the short term. So, um, by the way, see some news here, the BRICS currency to be attractive uh, than the US dollar pound. Uh, let's let's look at that also, because that is on my list of six things and uh, what the uh, BRICS are, you know, if they if they suddenly switch to a gold back or uh, from gold, I think to the, um, the yuan, then that could cause some turmoil in uh, the overall markets. So let's uh, keep that in mind. But here, this word potential approval. So we, it's not a done deal, everybody. We have to keep that in mind and uh, you know, have some powder dry. If they come out and say, hey, you know what? We like you, BlackRock, but we're not going to approve this. 
uh, expect a 10, 20% pullback panic sell on that. I would be buying that on down into key levels because I'm sure that would be short lived. And then later they'll come out and say, okay, you know, you guys, now you, now you're ready. We believe in you now. Uh, you have to sort of read between the lines and all this, everybody. So let's talk about um, the potential risks. Let's get to the meat of this as I've been trying to do. Risk factor, let's see. Uh, so they're not getting to the point here. And Revit's, so there's it's, it's non-news. They don't really talk about why. Okay, so we'll just park that in the back of our mind and uh, go from there. So BRICS currencies to be attractive. Um, then U.S. dollar, I think they missed a word there, to be attractive, then U.S. dollar, pound, euro. All right, this is a weird headline. So let's see. And again, this alt H should be my hot button there. Okay, that doesn't work here on this. Still learning this out. Okay, so BRICS outperforms U.S. dollar dumping yuan and ruble currencies. So, I um, mean, we're going down a rabbit hole here. I would monitor this on your own. The... um. Uh, the uh, Russia outperforms U.S. dollar by dumping yuan and ruble currencies. So I'm curious, is that you know, are they what are they moving toward? Uh, kind of turn BRICS turn in local currencies ending dependency on the U.S. dollar. This is the meat of it. The, you know, the, the de-dollarization of the world and BRICS was a story a while back. We it's been kind of smoldering. We haven't heard or seen anything from it. But, um, you know, this is going to contribute more to people wanting to buy Bitcoin because it'll further devalue the U.S. dollar, which, let's face it, folks, may be on a way out. Uh, I know it's hard to imagine. But anyway, uh, read here to know how many sectors in the U.S. will be affected by the dollar if uh, the BRICS nations stop using that. So I will we'll skim these and... Um, but I want to get it form an overall thesis in uh, you know in the world. So where are these things may be going. Let's see. A BRICS currency will grow more attractive than the U.S. dollar pound. So it's kind of a similar headline with the uh, missing word included. Uh, let's see. BRICS currency. Okay, so this is what I want you to pay attention to. So they really haven't uh, launched it. They're saying it's almost ready. So when they do launch it, what will be the impact? We we'll want to keep an eye on that. And uh, okay, so they are trying to compete this BRICS currency with the US dollar. Um, I've heard mixed things where this won't happen. The US dollar is too far embedded, but it certainly could ha cause a hiccup. And uh, all right, did not expect to be going down all these rabbit holes with this, but um, this is something I may uh, dive into and a little deeper for our um, M3 trader class that's tomorrow. And um, by the way, if you'd like to find out more about that, if you're watching on the YouTubes, you can go to cryptomastery.org for our indicators or or to moonstream.io slash M3 for our more advanced classes that are every Wednesday at noon and include the indicators we'll be sharing with you shortly. So that's uh, here at uh, moonstream.io slash M3. Okay, so um, back to the news here. Um, three ways bricks could end the U.S. dollar supremacy. All right, I'm not going to go through all these, but I recommend that you guys go look this up here. It's an interesting trail of what could happen. And, um, you know, it's starting to come to a head. This has been on my radar and I'm wondering, last week in class, I said, I wonder why this hasn't come up. We haven't heard more about this. And so um, let's see. Uh, I think that's all I wanted to do. So, but on the other side, yeah, so that's the thing. There's two sides of this. Galaziev, who's the Russian, seems too optimistic. Of course, that's what they do. And, uh, you know, so a new currency needs to gain the trust of other countries and traders. So, you know, this is a long term play. This isn't going to happen overnight. It would be too messy to just dump everything. And so this is kind of the takeaway. U.S. dollar is still the de facto supreme currency and no other tender comes close to dethroning it. And in short, the dollar remains the king of the world despite facing several challenges from external factors. Yeah, you know, and um, I don't know, been hearing some things like China's economy is kind of teetering on the brink. It's hard to know. They don't release their numbers, so we can't take anything at face value. But uh, the see Russia outperforms U.S. dollar by dumping yuan and rubles. So, okay. In favor of. So uh, let's see. Restaurant or bricks. Uh, I'm just curious. What are they uh, using instead? And uh, if they're if they're selling rubles, and yuan, what are they buying? Maybe they're buying. Is the BRICS currency ready yet? 
So cars coming at top. So it's saying it that it's currency, the ruble. It's not really clear. And um just a lot of BRICS countries. Oh, China, the 1.1 trillion. Yeah, here's this, here's this little well, I wouldn't say it's conspiracy theory, but wouldn't it make sense for China? to be loaning tons of money to these other developing countries to leverage and lean in on them so that they adopt the uh, the new BRICS currency, which will either be backed by the yuan or potentially gold. And I don't know, I'm not a gold bug. I don't know exactly how that plays out. Uh, obviously, it would increase demand for gold. And um, I think that we'll see that, though, as Kiyosaki was recently talking about, will uh, you know, as this economy sort of teeters, we're going to see in the dollar devalues, we'll see a flight to quality of gold, silver, and Bitcoin. So all of this is good, but we just need to see how it sorts out in the near term. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think that's all that we want to talk about here and what sectors might be affected if that happens. It'd be good to skim through this. Um, these are not really markets that we're... It's going to affect us too much, though. Travel, tourism, government policy, fintech, maybe production, consumer goods, capital markets. I don't see Bitcoin on here other than banking and finance. So I don't want to dive into that. Let's see. Let's also see this one, though. This may be more relevant. U.S. dollar overtakes BRICS currencies and gold. Um, printing new highs against the BRICS currencies in the foreign exchange markets. The dollar trumps the yuan, the rupee, the ruble, among others. And uh, what is this? The DXY is down. I don't know why they are talking about this going higher, but let's see. The rise of US dollar also weakening against gold, as we were saying. Okay. Um, what? As the precious metal hit a monthly low. Oh, I'm sorry. Weakening gold. Yes. I thought weakening against gold. I misread that. So where is the DXY? Is the DXY up again today? Hold on. Maybe I missed something. Let's look at that. Together, the real time. No, this is wrong. Look at the DXY dropping crypto. That's why. Huh? Isn't that odd though? The D the Dixie's down and uh, crypto's down at the same time. Usually they are inverse, but uh, this article here is uh, showing some dated uh, material uh, information here. When was this? October third, of course. This is old news. So, um, of course, that one hundred seven level we talked about that would go up and hit. I said we'd hit one hundred seven and likely reject, which is what happened. So that's why it's always important uh, to keep on the latest news. New information equals new decision. Is that right? So with um, you know this, uh, I'm going to. I'm just gonna. I don't want to. I think we're going too far down the rabbit hole. Three ways BRICS could end U.S. dollar supremacy. This would have been the article we wanted to see uh, in the beginning. We just had to dig for it. Sometimes you have to dig for the news. So the BRICS alliance kickstart the de-dollarization initiative this year, finding multiple alternatives to U.S. dollar supremacy, and et cetera, et cetera. We are change of color on that. And um, mm hmm Okay, you know what? This is a lot of different articles. The reason they do that is they want to sell ads and they want you to click through all these other places. So uh, we have that on there twice. Okay, enough about that. Spot Bitcoin ETF approval by the SEC. This is as of yesterday. Is approaching experts say what that means for investors. Yeah, I mean we just uh, we just don't know. We you know I'd have your finger ready on the buy button if it gets approved. And but don't uh, necessarily chase it if it jumps up considerably. What likely will happen on the approval, we'll see a major move up higher, five to ten thousand. Maybe that's the catalyst to get it up to that 48k 50 level, in which case I would be selling, taking some profits, selling 50 percent is my personal recommendation and wait for pullback to buy back. If it pushes above those levels, likely it would retest anyway. We'll look at that on the chart and that way you could buy back at the same price. You wouldn't be missing out. Um, three big raisins and ETF popper. So anyway, uh, what do you think, guys? What are your thoughts? I got a comment here. Let me pull the comments down where I can see them. Uh, let's see. Kiyosaki recent interview praised gold as God's money and talked about the fall of the American empire. Yeah. I mean, Kiyosaki's been, he's a gold bug. He's heavily invested in gold mines. Um, you can search the uh, many YouTube channels on this. He's uh, investing in some gold mine deep underground. So he he's pushing Bitcoin and gold, mostly gold, though. And uh, yeah, cash is trash. He says fiat is trash. Gold and silver is, I don't know if he said God's money, but um, he's also does like Bitcoin, you know. So all three of those, 
I think that um, are uh, good to go. I'm just skimming other news. If anything else breaking is coming up, let's see. Hedge fund envisions uh, Bitcoin a settlement layer for global assets. We do believe that's coming also. And uh, that's not new news. Okay, so let's dive into the charts, you guys. And of course, I have my handy dandy trader checklist here ready for evaluating some trades. If you want me to look at anything, uh, let me know and we can do that. And by the way, if you'd like to get a hold of this trader checklist, success checklist, where you can check off and uh, get uh, uh, ratings on various trades, you can just go over to moonstream.io and go down to this uh, button, scroll down past some of our services here and get the trader success checklist. You can click on that right there. Uh, since I can never remember the URL of where that is, you go there and, and do that. And um, by the way, uh, here are some free resources. So if you don't already have them or haven't already done that, sign up for our free crypto newsletter. That's every Monday where we're releasing our team does a great job digesting the news to send out every Monday. So you can do that there. And there is uh, these classes here. If you'd like to subscribe and join live with us, if you're watching the replay here on YouTube, then go here to register for those uh, every Tuesday. So there you can do that. And then, of course, the Trader Success Checklist. And there's some other reports down below you might want to have. So at any rate, um, if you click on that button, then you go here. You can download this checklist and there you go. You just hit that download button. All right. So we'll have that uh, set up for anything that looks good to us. So um, let me just jump back here. Uh, that's DXY. I'd love to see that dropping, but it's so strange to me that Bitcoin also down. And um, maybe this is finally decoupling. They, there's no reason they have to be uh, going inversely correlated. Um, and so I think at some point we'll we'll see that a decoupling of these two. So anyway, let's talk about Bitcoin here. We have it pulling up, hitting that 37, 38K region. You know, not surprisingly, it's seeing some kind of a pullback uh, or a barometer there. I'll have to get to a different chart to pull up our indicators, but uh, we could put a fib on that. I'm just curious. Hang on, let's see if we see anything there. Uh, you know, not, not really correlated. Kind of pushed up to the 1.618, a bit higher. On uh, the news, a bit of a short squeeze. I know a bunch of shorts were layering on down in this area. So that was uh, this big candle here. Definitely yeah, partially as a short squeeze. Solana is uh, trying to stay up higher. But, um, you know, let's get to uh, my different chart where we have some of our indicators on there and leave this one alone. I believe the uh, this was a. All right. Well, we'll get to the total market cap because that's interesting also. Yeah. Uh, well, that's interesting. This bars pattern, by the way, I pulled it from a prior cycle and was overlaying this. If, if this is what's playing out, we could see a pullback here. Look, I would love to see the total market cap pullback to this kind of support zone, right? And we're seeing a macro bull flag uh, there as well. So why don't we talk about that for a minute and then we'll get into our own indicators. But if you if you see what I see here, the um, uh, there's two things, and I'll hide this. This is an uptrending channel, a new uptrending channel that uh is has even gotten up above that. So, if we wanted to just pull up the object tree, and I'll hide this for a second. The uh, let's see, trend channel, where is it? This one probably, yeah. So, we'll hide that for now. And do you see the, the bull flag? So, we have it on Bitcoin. Here's the flagpole, here's the flag going down here, finding support. Fortunately, we held that trillion dollar level, such an important level that dipped down below a trillion for a little bit and we bounced and rallied higher. So, that was, thank God that happened. So, at that point, once we broke right there, this became a, a bull flag breakout. And the measured move from that, if we wanted to just take this other line, this line here is the same as that flagpole. And so the breakout of this puts us right precisely right up here at 1.6 trillion. You know, I, I have an alert there. I would recommend putting alert right about 1.6 trillion as a take profits level. And that perfectly correlates. Look at that. When in doubt, zoom out. That 1.6 trillion level has been such an important level all the way back. Okay. So uh, flipped as uh, was resistance back in 2021, flipped on over, got back up from resistance to support. Tried to hold support here, broke down below. It was resistance again. And then we rallied hard up to 2 trillion and 3 trillion, which is the market high. 
and then down again, pushed up to a little bit over two trillion, rejected, but kept trying to hold that support, support, broke support here back in May of 2022. Again, this 1.6 trillion total market cap level. So uh, it would make sense that if we rally higher, that will act as resistance. All right. So uh, this is the case for a short term pullback to this 1.2 trillion level and then rallying hard up uh, up to that level. So that's that's what I would expect. And uh, we'll see if I'm right. OK, so and uh, there we go. So why don't we go and we'll take a look at some of the crypto market movers here in a minute. Just going to scan the list, see if I see anything I recognize. I don't. Uh, but we have found some runaway winners using that like uh, ATOR back in early October. So we'll come back to this on the uh, monthly time frame. Uh, we'll talk about this more on our M3 crypto class here as the hat would in indicate so that's tomorrow again moonstream.io slash m3 we dive a little deeper into the total market and some of these other um, indicators but um yeah so far it looks pretty bullish we dive into some things like macd on that in tomorrow's class so let's jump down to the weekly guys and uh, on the weekly time frame look i have this here uh all last week we've had this chart on here for a while now and you know, I put up these lines. There's two scenarios I see from here. This we pushed up above this upper trend channel on Bitcoin, and either I do think we pull back, and um, and and this level here, 32k, such an important resistance level. We saw it try to break through here. Finally got above it. I'd love to see us come back to 32k and then and then push much higher. The CME gap. I don't see us going down there right now. To be honest, I think this is almost a um. And we can let that one go, but we'll have to see. Uh, we are overbought on our TSI, our trend strength indicator. So some pullback warranted and or we come back down to this 30K level and then push higher. So uh, we'll have to see. I'll turn off the uh, EMA ribbon. It's a bit high. See, and typically once it gets as far above the ribbon, uh, it has to pull back. This is uh, it's gotten too far high in the sky there. So we'll turn that off. And of course, the bull market support band, however, good that we are pushing up or well above the bull market support band. Coming back to retest, it would give us that, that launch power to get much higher, go much higher up to that 48K, 52K level, which I've indicated here. Okay, so that again is uh, the near-term target This in this range. Um, I think that's where we would pull back once more. And I guess it's not too early to put this on the chart just so it's there. You know, if we hit the 48K, 50K level, again, this is, uh, I'll show you why I think that is. That is that Fibonacci golden pocket that uh, often will retest. So here I have it on this chart. And let's go full screen for you guys. And then we'll open up our indicators, which are showing us uh, pullback likely also. But if we take that from market cycle high back here, down to the market cycle low, this sliver right here, 0.68. 0.68, 618 rather, to 0.65. This little sliver here, the golden pocket puts us right at 48K on the low side, 50K. On, I think if we get to 48K, we'll spike. We'll see a spike up to 50K. But um, 50, 48K also the high back from March of 2022. So right in that region, I would be taking profits for some kind of a pullback. And uh, that's why, let's see. So, but on this weekly time frame, um, our trend strength indicator getting a bit overbought if this starts turning red and we start to go down i would be even easing up on positions taking profits because we see how effective this is especially with that early reversal indicator so when this went red up here and we got the red uh chevron there breaking 80 time to sell over here time to sell over here time to sell so uh and you can validate that by going back these were all these kind of market cycle peaks when it was an ideal time to get out and of course uh the eri that early reversal indicator is that so hence the name the early signal so just like we got the arrow down here back in september of 2023 that was our indicator to get in confirming with this trend strength indicator going green and above the 20 line it's 90 95 percent accurate we have found when those two line up together and so those are those are very powerful signals and certainly when it goes green on the signal line we had that layer in and now we're in a uh, sequence here on the trend indicator which indicates longer term follow through especially and as we talked about last week especially when we have that nice slope the slope anything above you know the slope of this arrow here or similar 
is bullish. When the slope isn't as steep as the arrow, it kind of is an indication of a weak trend. That was a nuance that we talked about last week. So keep that in mind. So we are still in an uptrend on the trend uh, here. As long as we stay green, you know, we could still see higher higher prices. That's the caveat. So while I would normally say we pull back here, we're in the trend channel. Um, I'm waiting for a weekly ERI and a weekly TSI. So, you know, what would make sense here is selling half position and wait and see how it plays out. Because, uh, you know, I think, um, where's my EMAs here? Uh, I've got my 50 EMA. That's not on there. We'll go to another chart for that. But uh, anyway, so far, obviously bullish. I'd love to see another cycle, though. A, bull, a bearish ERI, bearish TSI come down and see another bottom here. Really what we want to look for, our ideal re-entry would be and will be, if it happens, is another one of these. The weekly ERI, weekly TSI, and then this goes green, green. Okay, so that's uh, the most bullish scenario that we could hope for. Let's see, uh, we have Bitcoin, Ethereum slumps. Yeah, that's why I didn't talk about the inflation numbers. They came in better than expected, but markets are pulling back, selling on the news, and um, and uh, that may be part of it. I think we rallied hard too fast on the BlackRock news right up to this upward trend channel. And, um, you know, that's where it's hitting resistance. So the economic numbers can only do so much. Down here, it's saying Kathy Wood speculates Gary Gensler's political ambitions are affecting the spot. ETF judgment. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it's interesting because even other former Fed chair people have said that they don't understand why Gary is uh, is holding out. This should have been approved by now. You know, who's pulling the strings here, everybody? Uh, if Gensler has political ambitions, certainly he would listen to anybody that could help him get there and... Uh, you know, their agenda, whatever that might be. We'll take off our tin hat for now. A imminent Bitcoin ETF decision could shake crypto market, as we talked about. And uh, let's see, uh, 900 million XRP moved by unknown wallets. So it's not clear where they were moved to. If they moved to exchanges, that could indicate sell pressure. But uh, we don't know. 25 trillion crypto economy predicted by Kathy Wood. Yeah, so I mean, Kathy's a perma bull and... Um, has a lot of incentive for that to happen along with Michael Saylor. But even if we take the half, take the midpoint, a 12.5 trillion, uh, I assume she means total market cap. I don't know that we want to go into it. Let's see. And by when? By 2030. So that would be in, you know, let's call it six years. Uh, you know, the acceleration of adoption, it can happen that way. And, and actually on that point, let me pull up something that uh, we put in, I put in our M3 uh, trader chat here is about that bell curve. Uh, and actually it was in our retire rich program that uh, if you've heard about crossing the chasm, that's a well-read book on the uh, tech, high tech sectors. And it basically talks about the different phases of adoption. Here, I'm going to pull that up here for you guys. And essentially here, here it is. So crossing the chasm means this. You have your innovators when you first start out. This was Bitcoin 2013, 2015. And then right in here, we started getting the early adopters, right? So that's taken us kind of into this 23, where we are now. We're really approaching this chasm where the adoption can just go vertical. Nobody's really talking about this, but the early majority here is this next phase. So 2030, I would imagine, is right up in the, the peak of this. And that is the, the target why Kathy Wood is talking about those. And so we're in the perfect time. We're in the right place at the right time. And so if you haven't uh, seen that before, I believe I believe we're, we're crossing into the chasm, which is also a dangerous place because uh, it's trying to go changing the narrative from what the innovators and early adopters believed in going mainstream. So I'll, um, I think that's all about all I wanted to talk about, but she's correctly saying this is a bull market. We are in the early stages of the bull market. And uh, incidentally, you know, we were one of the few people in when we launched M3 Active Trader last December at the, at the depths of the bear market. Okay, right back in here, December of 2022 right in here see that this is where we launched m3 active trader i was saying guys this is it this is the bottom this is time to get in and we were right so we nailed the bottom there and so um what uh so that was a great time to get in bitcoin up 100 
at least on the first push. But since then, Bitcoin is now up. Let's see, is now up as of yesterday, 122%. As of today, 112%. So uh, that was largely based on our indicators as well. So um, let's uh, let's jump back to that bull market, right? So we click, correctly call that. And um, so I'm sure there's some anticipation. Sell the news would emphasize the importance of underlying fundamentals. And let's see, ARK Invest monthly Bitcoin reports. So look, she's you have to read between the lines, everybody. The outlandish claims are designed to get attention and attention is the new currency and bringing attention to ARK Invest is Kathy's job. Similarly to Balaji, who was the Coinbase CTO, having the million dollar crypto or a million dollar Bitcoin price bet last year, uh, that was to generate attention for himself and for Coinbase. So, you know, and, and for Bitcoin. So just keep that in this in the side pocket there so you understand that predictions are both uh, designed to attract attention and investor dollars uh, and also to the person saying it. So that's why if you take a half and it still sounds good, then maybe that's a good prediction to pay attention to. And then she's she's been saying million dollar Bitcoin for a while. Now she's upping the price to 1.5 million Bitcoin. Uh, let's see why. But as I just said, this is uh, attention getting headlines. And uh, let's go half half on it. Seven, $750,000 Bitcoin, though, from here still would be a great investment, wouldn't it? Uh, and that would be, um, you know, that would be a bit uh, more re reasonable and realistic, I would say. Uh, all right. So with that in mind, though, uh, let me do one thing here because I wanted to, to share with you what we talked about and we cover every week in our M3 class. So I'm just going to Google real quick the uh, my trading view page if you'd like uh, more information. Uh, the reason I'm pulling this up here, by the way, all right, why is this not coming up? Uh, the um, the uh, because you can get more free information and follow this because basically. Where is this here? Trading view ideas. We've got an alert on Adam. Okay, we'll come back to that. I'm trying to find my own trading view page because of that uh, scenario I told you guys about that uh, where we could go to six figure Bitcoin. And I don't always have this pulled up here. Now, why can't I find it? Did I get kicked off of trading views? It's doubtful, but um, uh, usually that would, uh, that would bring it up. Okay. So I've got to find out where that is. Maybe some of you have that because sometimes I post on there. Actually, what we could do is, uh, go to my Twitter and which I'm just kind of getting going on. You can follow me on Twitter, by the way, if you'd like at, uh, right here at just Brett Fogel, which is of course called X now terrible rebrand, but, um, here. So, uh, if you Google me here, I have posts on this again, I said Saul exhaustion move to take profit zone. That was the other day when it was just hitting that level. And, and you know, some of you were unsure, but sure enough, we pulled back from there. So, guys, this doesn't have to be that hard. Okay. But uh, if you skim down, this is the scenario. Where is it? It's one of these that uh, is on my Twitter here. And let's just do this. If you click on any of them, oops, except that one, <laughs> it's trading view. It'll it should take you to the page of the uh, various ones. Here's the one on the 48k, 50k golden pocket we talked about, and uh, we could see that sort of playing out. But uh, I'm sorry, guys, I'm trying to get back to kind of my page, and uh, it's not letting me easily get back there. Here it is. Okay, so this is the one. Thanks for bearing with me. Some of you have seen this. This is the scenario. Again, the path to 100K Bitcoin. We're going to cover this more in depth tomorrow. But here are the six steps. BlackRock and Fidelity ETF approval. Check. QE money printing to pay down debt. Check. Bank failures, bank runs, transfers in the BTC. We're starting to see some regional banks failing. And uh, again, flight to quality. Money likely move to Bitcoin where it's safer. Here's that one we discussed earlier. The de-dollarization and BRICS hyperinflation. So these are reasons that the dollar could start to devalue and uh, partially because the other countries dumping the dollar, more supply, less demand. And so that would uh, sort of de-dollarize and, and make the dollar deflate further. So we're starting to see that with those headlines we talked about. And then, of course, corporate accumulation and then the country accumulation. We saw that headline a minute ago with these other countries. And then the post having Bitcoin miners selling. Okay, so 
here. It's a little too early. I just posted this, but this is my scenario here. I uh, how we could get. I think we at least get to 155k Bitcoin in this cycle. So there you have it. Uh, you can find that on uh, Twitter or look at it on TradingView if you want to follow along. So this is cool because I can't change it once it's posted. And I, I I don't know. I'll be curious to see if this happens. I've been looking at this scenario for four or five months now. So anyway, uh, back to this chart and uh, not seeing any coins that you guys wanted to look at. How are we doing on time? Coming up on the hour. So we spent a lot of time on the news. Let's dive into uh, some of the uh, coins here. So Solana pulling back. I'd like to see now. I want to see. Um, let's see. Why are my indicators not on here? I'm going to load up a new chart. You guys, if you have any questions, then that would be a good time to let me know. And uh, let's see, and then we'll load this up. Okay, no questions. Well, what I want to do is add in our, here we go, our uh, EMAs, 21 and 50 day EMAs. Oops, they were already on. And uh, then the uh, ERI. Okay, so we've got everything we need. We have a mixed radar on Bitcoin, which was, uh, by the way, was all green the other day. So these things do change. But look at this on the daily, seeing the TSI coming down. I like this. I like this because here's what we want to see. We want to see this arrow, the bullish early reversal indicator, coinciding with our trend strength indicator going red to green. These two things, very high probability. And that's when we would go over to our checklist and say, is the ERI showing a green up arrow? Is the TSI green above the 20 line? And then ideally, the third one has a signal line turn from red to green okay so uh and uh in this case they're not all turned on there's that signal line so we're, we're seeing a nice cycle pullback and i can't wait until we get another green so green is go uh, bitcoin pulling back no surprise here it just means profit taking some resting and where could it pull back to uh you know down to the 50 day ema potentially but um, but yeah, you know, look at this. It pushed right up kind of to that 1.618 uh, retracement there. Pushed a little above it, but, you know, look, I've been saying since last week, likely pullback. All right, so we've got that covered. And let's keep moving here. Uh, ETH here, if you guys are uh, trading ETH, have a nice little pullback there. Broke back below 2,000, but that's okay because now we have cemented 2K as a support level. Well, we had. Let's see where we close. Kind of, we really want to get back above this. This 2000 level is, uh, is tricky for ETH for some reason. But again, what are we going to wait for? Our indicators. Let's wait for a pullback. The here's what I'm saying, you guys. The next cycle of ERI TSI signal is, is going to be the big one. Okay. So we welcome a pullback here. Um, and, you know, ETH, we want to see it close and hold above 2K, but it's not as much price. It's the next push on the ERI TSI. So wait and watch for that. And again, if you're watching and you don't have these indicators, just go to cryptomastery.org. This has been our secret weapon for since 2021. And this accidental discovery of this ERI, the early reversal indicator, as it coincides with the trend strength indicator has caught all of these market bottoms and tops. So I can't uh, emphasize enough uh, how important it is to have these tools. You can actually get a free month and look and see some of the coins we picked using these at cryptomastery.org. So if it's new to you, definitely check that out. If you sign up for the, uh, okay, we've got a uh, old link in there. Uh, Myrene, if you're paying attention, we need to update the links here on this because we did change those. So um, let's get back to that and should be the top link. No. Okay. All you need to do there, that's embarrassing, is go over to moonstream.io and go down to the bottom. This link should be good for Crypto Mastery right here. We did get it. We bought a new domain, so that works. And then the order buttons should uh go to the right spot they're not all right we need to fix that sorry you guys so um anyway let's jump back over to this we're always kind of moving going in different directions so that's uh needs to get updated and um got it 
All right, cool. Um, coming back down to the rest of these, uh, Solana, we saw a pullback there. Anything you guys want to look at? Like last chance. Otherwise, let's go to the, okay. Hey, Leslie, thanks for joining. Uh, let's see, not a whole lot of going on otherwise. I think what I'd like to do here is we'll go to our crypto mastery list and uh, see most things are down and pulling back. So, you know, profit taking, nothing to worry about. We got a bit extended here on these. So we're getting bearish ERIs on some of these. So again, I always take profits when we start pushing up toward the upper Bollinger Bands on these. If you don't have the uh, modified Bollinger Bands that we talk about, you can just pull that up here and we use a modified Bollinger Band. All you have to do is come up here, change the standard deviation to three standard deviations. And that's going to give you a much better read on these things. So push up above. This is one of my favorite take profit signals. If you guys are always asking, when should I sell? When should I sell? Keep telling you guys, when we get, if you get above that third standard deviation Bollinger Band, that's the point because invariably things go sideways and pull back. This is Filecoin. Nice little pullback here on that upper Bollinger Band. So we wait for re-entry indicators, ERI and TSI. Okay, so um, skim me through these. Let's take a look at anything going higher. AVAX is looking strong here on a down day. It still has a bearish ERI though. So in your trade checklist, we do have the bearish scenarios. So you would come down here and we do have a, a new version of this coming out soon. So basically we've got advanced setups and uh, the bearish scenarios. So, you know, we've got TSI coming down and the radar turning red, those would be bearish. So you can look for those also. So anyway, um, let's see. So ABAX here are still pulling back. I think we're not in a buy zone right now. I would not be looking to buy anything at this time until we start getting our bullish signals. Let's jump over here to the, the top movers. And uh, let's see, we had an alert on Adam. Um, Adam crossing down. It's not a bad time to start looking for bounces on pullbacks either so i think probably this is ator not adam uh let's see i want to stay on this so if we go over to a uh, adam for cosmos do we have it it should be in our list here already okay let's see uh it should be in there but we've got so many lists it's hard to keep track so adam cosmos let's do it on coinbase there we go so yeah so i had an alert set as a potential buy level, um, this chart doesn't have any of my things loaded. Let me get rid of that chart because this one does. All right, so, right. So this is the one we wanna look at. And why would we have an alert set as a potential bounce? I can't remember, I did have a, an alert, but Adam is one to watch. And I'd wait for our bullish signals on the way back up, check news really quickly. This isn't really um, interesting. Adam brings IBC to Avalanche. So, you know, one thing on that is that uh, we're going to start seeing more mergers, more partnerships as things go along. And and that'll really drive price, kind of like when AVAX partnered with uh, Amazon. So keep in mind, as this market evolves, it gets a little closer. A lot of the development that's been happening over the last bear market will start coming to light. And uh, so... You know, even though we're pulling back, I still think it's bullish, you know, a couple days pulling back into the end of the week, we could see another major rally as the we ride up this middle exponential moving average, the Bollinger Bands tighten, and we see another cycle higher on the, uh, the TSI, the trend strength indicator. So, you know, we've been riding this upper band for weeks now, and it's time for the bears. It's, uh, you know, it's... It's both have to exist. Neither can exist without the other. So if we have enough, even if we have a couple of weeks downtrending into the holidays and then blast off into December, you know, that wouldn't be a bad thing. You know, I, my favorite entries are great down here. As I said, this would have been October uh, 21st of 2023 coincided with our early reversal indicator there. Those are the times that we want to kind of layer in and go heavier because we had a nice 50% run on Cosmos Atom. So, 
you know, knowing when to invest and when to stay out of the markets is the mark of a professional and the uh, experienced trader. So these are normal pullbacks, not surprised to see this. In fact, last Friday, I did say on Friday, expect to see some selling pressure going into the weekend. Here again, Jan Storge got above the Bollinger Band, pulled back. In fact, I would imagine many of these did. Bitcoin didn't quite get there to the upper Bollinger Band, but uh, many of these did. We had ETH break above the Bollinger, sold off. Let's take a look at Solana. Hit the upper Bollinger Band, sold off. So there you go. There's your golden nugget for today. Use the modified Bollinger Band as your sell target. And, uh, you know, a good, good place to sell half and then re-enter lower if you have the chance let's take a look at some top movers real quick uh let's see uh, my filter is total market cap 41 million kind of low uh we can pull up assemble protocol i don't know much about it again i would be careful looking for buying opportunities when the rest of the markets are pulling back in but then again i do like to put them on my radar sometimes now this is above its bollinger band this will pull back and uh, we'll see some profit taking. But, uh, you know, I think what we could do, let's do this. This could be fun. Let's add it. Let's add a new section called hot movers. And uh, let's see. So that way we can keep tabs on these. The reason being, we so this is how we found ATOR. And um, that was one that uh, we had 100% 100 uh, win on. So here we go, hot mover. So we'll keep an eye on this. Doesn't mean go buy it. It means let's keep an eye on this nice uptrend. All right, uh, kind of a light market cap, but I'm going to turn that off and we'll get out of there. Let's see what else we have. Pol uh, Polkadex, sounds kind of like Polkadot. What is Polkadex? Not sure. The uh, We have Moon, I don't know. That's a bit low on the market cap. This probably, the ones at the top typically have pumped already but it has decent circulating supply versus polka decks which has virtually nothing so we'll take a look at moon uh why does it sound familiar there was one project called moon token a while back i'm not sure if it's the same and uh, so let's pull that up and see yeah this is just an as an ugly chart don't touch this way above its bollinger band uh this is a pump and dump and um it just not enough volume there so we're going to put that away as we suspected that's kind of how you filter these polka decks just not enough there low market cap these are too easily manipulated you guys uh banana gun never heard of it 34 million 2 million circulating supply not enough i uh, i just for curiosity's sake only uh it's a meme coin it looks like banana gun you know, look, if you want to go in and throw three, four, five hundred dollars in these, that's up to you. It's not what we really do here. We do have a bullish ERI, but uh, this does not have enough. For me, this doesn't have enough. I'd have to look into it further. And if you're looking for gem coins, that's uh, probably another course. But our indicators do work on all coins and also stocks, futures, etc. Just so you know that, I uh, can go to cryptomastery.org once we fix the uh, order button link. All right, um, ergo, this is a little bit bigger here and see on super charts. Let's see, we'll kind of wrap things up here. I think uh, we've done a good job at going through the hot movers. This one has a big update. Again, it's above its Bollinger Band. I would not be looking to buy this, although it's in a bit of an upper trending channel. So, hey, why don't we keep an eye on it? We'll add this to our Crypto Mastery Hot Movers watch list. And, uh, you know, you never know. Maybe this is it's just getting started. What is interesting on that, uh, let's just go ahead and turn off the ERI there to give it a better indication or yet a better look at it. All right. Yeah, did you see these big pumps, though? These kind of things that pump and sell off are dangerous. So I don't really like this chart. I think I'm going to take that off. We don't want to put it on our list. But uh, it's good that we have the hot movers. And I encourage you guys to do that, too. Here's what you can do. Let's find one more together. Here's something called Celestia. And it's got a decent market cap. And it's up 20%. This is about the range. I don't like to see it more than 20% higher in the day because then it seems more like a pump and uh, potentially going to come back down and dump. So this is a fairly new coin. Um, these newer projects, though, I just don't know when they're going to sell off. It's all red on the radar, so that's a no for me right there. Okay, so I want to find one more to show you what we 
would look for in these cases. So DYDX, here's one. Here's one we do follow. Beautiful. DYDX, good example. Uh, this is a great coin. Uh, they're doing a four, a $20 million airdrop for users of their version four. It's a DEX. So it's kind of like Serum was going to be. So this will be a, an active trader DEX. I'm not making a recommendation, although we have recommended this in our Retire Rich program and it's going higher. What do you see here, guys? I see a bullish engulfing candle, which is interesting. And so what I was starting to say, though, and let's certainly add this to the watch list for Crypto Mastery. It's already on our inner circle and our active trader list. I think it's on a different exchange. That's why it's not checked here. But the point of that is if we put it on to our hot movers, bear with me uh, there. What's going on here, guys? I got. Uh, why did that happen here? Never seen that happen before. Bear with me, you guys. I want to show you how we would um, monitor these over time. So uh, the upper Bollinger Band is getting hit. I wouldn't necessarily be chasing it, but it's in a nice uptrend. Let's clean up the chart a little bit. We don't need our ERI. Okay, we the Bollinger Bands will turn off for now. What I'm looking for is exact. This is a great example. Okay. Do you see this? So when you start seeing things get above and close above prior resistance, that is worth taking note of. Let's zoom out a little bit. When in doubt, zoom out. Heard me say that. So we're breaking above DYDX. It's too early to tell, but you see this sideways consolidation. I realize it's not easy coin to get. I think you have to get it on MAXC. Uh, Rick, is who's here, I know you said it was available on MAXC and somewhere else. And uh, so I would, uh, I'm not, we don't give buy sell recommendations in this class. We do in our M3 Active Trader and our Retire Rich classes. Uh, and so we'll be looking at this this week in more detail with uh, specific recommendations. But as it gets above and closes above this prior resistance, and I'm surprised we didn't have an alert set for that already, then that's a good signal. When, when resistance flips as support, these are often great uh, setups. So we would imagine to see something like this, okay? And so since it hasn't confirmed yet, this could still sell off on the day. And our other indicators indicates a bit overbought. This is where we would go to a weekly chart, however. And uh, the weekly chart tells us the longer term strength. So, you know, if this can close at above this level, $3.50 at or above, and what also is significant here is the 21 and 50 week EMAs are about to cross. This is one of my favorite indicators. We're definitely going to want to watch, keep an eye on DYDX for this kind of a scenario because uh, if we look at how far to its old high, now this is a fairly new project. So, you know, it hasn't been through, it's, it's kind of was around the, the bull market in 2021, but it had just launched. That's not a fair representation, but it still has a 7X, 688% potential from here to the old highs. Uh, I think that this is definitely one to watch and uh, not financial advice, but um, you guys, if you want to keep an eye on this as we go forward, by the way, uh, again, you can find out more about us at moonstream.io M3 and uh, on the uh, Moonstream area our website there you can find out about our retire rich inner circle where we focus in on gem coins emerging markets and coins that are down quite a bit macro strategy future of ai metaverse nfts uh and icos dows crypto cities these are longer term buy and holds you can't really sign up you'd have to email us here for more information about that okay so with that uh that's all we have time for you guys and so Hope you guys have a good week. For those of you an M3 Active Trader, we'll see you tomorrow. Have some things to share with you, and uh, that should be fun. So anyway, hopefully uh, you enjoyed the new format here with the uh, the video on video. And um, yeah, thanks everybody. And so, and if you'd like to attend these classes live every week, again, you can sign up on that Moonstream.io page and uh, join us with your questions. All right, thanks everybody. Thanks Rick, and I'll uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. See ya.